Hi everyone, welcome to my kitchen. Today in my recipe, I'm going to show you how to make a very, very traditional dish, which is probably getting lost in tradition, and that's the patra, also known as alubadi in Maharashtra as well. So this patra is made from the kolikesha leaves, also known as the arbi leaves, wherein we layer the arbi leaves with a nice spicy katta mita basin mixture, roll it up into a log and then steam it, and then cut it into pin wheels and saute it and fry it. It's a very, very delicious dish which is absolutely melt in the mouth and is super simple to make and I believe these arbi leaves are very easy to grow at home as well. So without wasting any time, let me just dive right in and show you how to make this very traditional um, patra and um, so you can make it at home too. So to begin making the patra, the first step is to make the katta mita basin mixture. Okay, so let me get started into a large mixing bowl. I'm going to go ahead and add in the basin and to this all the remaining ingredients which is going to add to the flavour. One of the most important ingredients is the asafoetida hing, also known as perengayam, which adds a great taste, flavour and health as well. And this particular uh, hing is very strong, so just a few pinches will do really good. Okay, so I'm just going to go ahead and add it. So I'm just going to add it. You know, the shaker bottle is really helpful because uh, it allows you to measure a few pinches. So my few pinches is going to be about close to a quarter teaspoon. Okay, so that's it. So I'm just finished adding that and I'm going to add the remaining. So that's the red chili powder, turmeric powder, coriander powder, and then we have the salt, some dahi, ginger. You can also add uh, green chilli paste if you want, but I added the red chilli powder. And then I'm going to add the jaggery, which is going to add to the sweetness. And to make it katta, I'm going to be adding uh, tamarind water and then combine the mixture to make a nice thick paste. You can also add amchur powder if you want and if you don't want to use tamarind water. So I'm just going to go ahead and combine this and make a nice thick paste, which is like spreadable over the patra leaves, okay? So let's just keep adding the tamarind water until it combines well. And then later I'll add a little bit of water if required to make it a nice thick paste, okay? So I think a little more water will be required right now. So I'm just going to go ahead and add that. So we'll mix it up really well. Ensure that the jaggery and there are no lumps and all the masalas are well combined. Give it a taste and it should taste katta mita and spicy as well, okay? So um, you can add extra chilli powder if you want to make it spicier or green chilli paste to make it spicier. Okay, so that's it. Just combine it well. Just going to add a little more water and mix it up. So that's it. The paste is now well combined. Now I'll show you how to prepare the leaf how to de-stem it and remove all the thick stems and then after that layer the leaves with this basin mixture. Okay, so that's it. So I'm just going to show you that. So I have the RB leaves here which I have cleaned and kept and I'm going to show you wipe it, wash it and then wipe it with a nice wet cloth and then ensure that it's cleaned on both the sides. Okay, and after you do that, important thing is to take off the stem. Um, the way you figure out a good RB leaf is when the uh, stem is tender and then you can break it easily. And what I'm going to do is now it's important to sort of uh, uh, remove like most, de-wain them, remove most of the stem with a knife so that it becomes easier for you to roll and make the patra, okay? And these stems are by the way edible. You can actually cut them and add it to your sabzis or your dals and sambars and you can eat them. Okay, so I'm just going to go ahead and first stem them, use a knife and then run it very gently along the sides and then cut it out. Okay, so and then similarly I'm just going to use a knife and then run it out like this and then cut it. Okay, so be very careful, you don't want to tear the leaf. There you go. So you just want to ensure that the RB leaves um, are tender without the stem because only then it will be easy to roll it out. So that's it. So I have deveined most of it and it feels tender and soft and just run your fingers around it. If you feel there are bumps, again run your knife and then remove the stem. So now my next step is to um, make the patra wherein I'm going to be 
uh, you know, um, layering each one of the leaves with the basin paste and then adding another leaf basin paste, about four to five layers and then roll it to make a log and steam. So let me get started. So the side in which you're supposed to smear the basin is going to be the lighter side of the leaf. So this is the dark side of the leaf. So I'm going to flip it over, which is the stem side, and we're going to be layering the basin on this side, okay? Smearing the basin on this side. Just going to go ahead and smear it nicely, generously, and evenly as well. So I'm going to take another leaf, layer it on top of the other leaf, and then smear some basin over it. And we'll proceed doing the same thing uh, until we have like four or five leaf layers, okay? And then I have my last leaf over here, so I'm just going to now layer this, and I'll show you how to fold and roll it into a log. So now to roll it into a log, I'm going to first fold the sides and press it down. And this is why you need to have the veins removed because see how easily it folds? Perfect. So now I'm going to roll the entire thing into a log, okay? So tightly roll it so you get a beautiful pinwheel when you actually cut it. So as you're rolling, I'm going to be smearing a little bit. We'll keep smearing a little bit of the basin mixture and then roll. We'll smear some more basin and the last part just fold it and bring it to the end and, and roll it down. So that's it. So this is done. So I'm going to go ahead and proceed to make one more log just like this and then we'll place both the logs in the steamer and steam it on high for about 10 minutes. So I'm going to keep it to the side and proceed to make the next log. So I have both the logs ready, so I'm just going to go ahead and place it in my steamer, which is a greased tali plate. And I'm going to be steaming it on high heat for about 10 to 15 minutes until you notice that the leaves have softened a little bit and have a light glaze on the top. So it's been steaming for about 10 minutes exactly and I opened it to check and it's actually done. Notice that the leaves are lightly discolored and it's soft as well. So I'm just going to show you how it is. So if you actually run a knife slightly, it should feel soft and it should go in without it being crisp. So if it is like that, then it's absolutely done. So what I'm going to do now is to take it out of the steamer, allow it to cool for a bit and then cut it into pinwheels. Okay. So now I'm going to cut these into pinwheels of about one inch thickness. And uh, so notice you can see all the layers of the pinwheels and the basin also in each one of those layers. That's how it should be. So if you had, you know, given a good lather of basin on each one of the layers, you'll have a delicious tasting patra. Okay, so I'm just going to cut all of them and keep it to the side. So now that I've cut all of these, now my next step is to saute them and pan fry them along with the delicious tadka. So let me show you how to do that. So into my preheated pan, I'm going to add in some oil, ensure your pan is preheated and once it is, keep it on low. Okay, so typically patra is deep fried, some homes deep fried, but I like pan frying it because it's healthier and it tastes great too. So what I'm going to do is to now add in the mustard seeds first and then the cumin seeds and allow it to crackle. And the once the mustard and cumin crackle, I'm going to go ahead and add in the SSP uh, asafoetida, which is also the perengayam, which adds in, again, a second round of it, which is going to bring in delicious flavors to the outer crust of the patra, okay? So I'm just going to go ahead and add a few pinches. Okay, and to this, I'm going to add in the sesame seeds, very important, which is thin, and then the curry leaves. So while the sesame seeds are crackling, I'm just going to cover it lightly because they tend to splutter everywhere and then, you know, and creates a mess in the kitchen. So keep the heat to low, allow the sesame seeds to crackle and turn lightly brown and golden. See, now it's better. So initially when you add it, just keep a lid handy to sort of cover it uh, just lightly, okay? I'm just going to give it a stir now and uh, roast the sesame seeds on low heat until you notice that it has become lightly crisp. Great. So notice that the sesame seeds are also changing golden color. At this stage, I'm going to go ahead and add in our cut patra. Okay? And we're going to be pan frying them into this for about three to four minutes until it gets a nice golden brown texture. So we'll allow the bottom of the patra to first get roasted and then I will flip it over with a chimta and cook it the other side going to flip it with a chimta or tongs so that it roasts on the other side as well and gets a nice sesame seed crust. 
So notice that the patra is now crisp and browned, golden brown on both the sides and this is perfect. So at this stage, I'm just going to turn off the heat and then I'm ready to sort of garnish with some fresh coconut and coriander leaves. So I hope you enjoyed watching this recipe of how to make a very traditional and authentic dish which is a patra. And do give this uh, recipe a try and let our traditions not go away. If you get hold of the Kolakasia leaves, all the arbi leaves, try it out. It's really simple to make. All you need is basin, a few set of basic ingredients and of course the patra leaves. And all you have to do is to steam it, fry it and your dish is ready. So it can be served as an appetizer for your parties or even as a side dish or a snack along with your chai. And typically it's a farsan, so it most often gets served along with the main course meal itself. Um, but you can also have it as a snack. So when you do try this recipe, don't forget to share it in the comments below of how you enjoyed making it. Would love to hear back from you. So until next time, happy cooking and healthy eating.